Here's Brody Brazil. I feel like the video clips we're about to watch do need a bit of setup and background, so let's do that now. This was all part of a state of pro sports, like summit and panel discussion that was put on by the Nevada Independent and was moderated by their reporter and friend of this YouTube channel, Howard Stutz. You've seen him on here talking about the A's and potential relocation. Howard's lived in Las Vegas since the early 80s. He's been covering gaming and a little bit of politics and business, but now obviously the sports side has very much merged into what he does. Howard is joined by Oakview Group President Mark Bedane. Also, he is the former Oakland and Las Vegas Raiders president, so he's got that background and insight. Derek England is also part of this panel. You may remember that name, former Las Vegas Golden Knights player, now special assistant to their owner, Bill Foley. He's also a Las Vegas resident and has been for more than 20 years. And then there's Nikki Fargus, who is the president of the right now world champion Las Vegas Aces. They're also in this year's WNBA final series. As I record this, that's still going on. So those are the three joined by Howard. And I do have to say that watching this about hour-long discussion, it's mostly cordial. There's a lot of synergy between these individuals and their franchises. They talk about where they've been, where they're at, and where things are going. But there were a couple times that awkwardness came over this group And a couple times directly related to when the topic of the Oakland A's came up, either straight directly or even indirectly. Like, that's kind of how this this first clip plays out here. There's Mark Bedane, and they're going to be talking about the NBA arena project that the Oakview Group wants to bring to Las Vegas. It's a $10 billion project. You're going to hear the name Tim brought up here. That's Tim Lewicki, their CEO. He's built a bunch of different projects, including T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. And he wants to commit $10 billion of all private money to get their NBA arena project going. So watch this interaction. Tim dropped the line, $10 billion <clears throat> at the LV uh, uh, the, uh, event this summer in June. LVGA's perspective. Yeah, and he, he dropped it at $10 billion and no public monies. And by the way, that event in June was literally the next day after SB1 was approved for the A's, $380 million of public money. So Lewicki decided to come out and say, the very next day, we're also doing a project. It's $10 billion, and we don't need any of the state or county's money. So, you know, I guess Tim's... uh, Tim, Tim says usually what he, what he says, he the, usually does. The parcel of land is a 66-acre parcel, and the original plan was just to develop about 25 acres. Mm-hmm. It's now expanded, and we're master planning the full 66 acres right now. Uh, and- Which sounds a lot different than nine acres of the A's project, but they're doing their their own different thing here. This is an arena surrounded by an entirely new district. When we have renderings and we have news to share, it'll be because it's done. It won't be because it's uh, a pretty picture that we just want to show to the public. It'll be that it's uh, hmm, ready to... It'll be- Did you just hear Howard in the background? Hmm. I wonder who you're talking about. We just want to show to the public. It'll be that it's hmm, uh, ready to, it'll be ready to produce and it'll be ready to activate. It'll be ready to uh, file entitlement. And that's, that's probably when we'll make our next announcement. I mean, he said it without saying it. That seemed to me like Mark Bedane was going right after the A's. And, and how they put out those three renderings literally the same day that they submitted the request for public money. That was in May. And then... About two months later, they publicly told everybody, throw away those renderings. They meant nothing. We're going to design something completely different. So that was one uh, part of this. That was not even the main part, but that interaction, those comments uh, kind of caught my eye. Now, later on here, Mark Bedin goes into a little bit more detail, his background from Oakland, his experience with the Raiders, their issues with the A's over the years, and uh, that's kind of what Howard gets into Next here with uh, questions to all three in this panel. Let's talk, I want to talk about, I want to joke, say the elephant in the room, but their name, their, they have a mascot named Stomper. So that, that is the Oakland A's and the, and the, the A's perspective move here to Vegas. They um, are not doing these type of events right now until they uh, get the, I guess, get the vote from Major League Baseball or, some, or move forward some more. So they're, I mean, they're doing small things here, but not much. Which, by the way, makes sense. I mean, In a situation like this where you've got some things like they do, public money approved, a land agreement deal, but not the ultimate thumbs up. I mean, I I get that on the A's part of, of why they're not part of an event like this. 
that would seem a little bit premature. Does it mean anything? Do they know something? No, it, it, it's kind of common sense that like they're not there yet. So a situation like this to what Howard is pointing out, that's the main reason why they're not part of this discussion. Um, they're talking about building a $1.5 billion, 33,000 seat stadium at Hunter on the side of the Tropicana Hotel right now. You're looking at a 20,000 seat arena. We have a 65,000 seat arena. We have multiple arenas, like you said, 18,000 at TNM, 18,000 at T-Mobile. Where does a 30,000 seat, 33,000 seat baseball stadium fit in? And and I, you've had you've had dealings with the A's. You guys shared a, shared a stadium in Oakland, the Oakland Coliseum. Where is this all? Where, where does this where is this headed? I'm curious. Uh, why don't you start with those two? <laughs> you come to me last. I mean, you can't see Mark on camera right there, but I'm sensing the body language is is suggestive at this point that he's he's beginning to feel uncomfortable. You want me to? I'll be happy to. Uh, look, uh, <laughs> The issues between the Raiders and the A's are pretty well documented. Frankly, uh, I think Mark was diplomatic. Mark Davis, owner of the Raiders, not him, Mark Bedeen. He's saying Mark Davis was diplomatic in the the doings between the Raiders and the A's in Oakland and Alameda County over the decades. Um, you know, the, the this is a small industry, and you compete on the field. Uh, but you expect a level of honesty and professionalism that just didn't exist. And so those feelings are going to persist, and I don't know uh, how long it will take before they're gone. So, Make of it what you will. I won't take a side or a position, A's versus Raiders over the years, but I think what we can take away and understand is that if you thought these two would connect and reunite in Las Vegas and and – you know, call it water under the bridge. Apparently, from Mark Bedane's perspective, uh, this is something that never was resolved and is maybe still not in a good place. Now, he's not part of the Raiders anymore, to be clear and to be fair, but maybe that's why he can speak a little bit more freely about it. Without uh, With that out of the way, no. um, I don't know the answer to that. What I know the answer to is I, I went to the Sphere last night, mm -hmm. and I know what uh, we put into building Allegiant Stadium. And you better build something special here. I'm not even from Las Vegas. I'm, I've made several videos about that point. Like a bar has been set. He literally, he's, he's referencing a video I made, what, two weeks ago. The sphere is spectacular and the bar has been set. And when something's here in Las Vegas, the next thing has to be here. It can't be here. And the thing after that's got to be here and so on and so on. So I, I, all I'm saying is I feel a little bit validated. He is spelling out exactly what I can see from a couple hundred miles away. You know what we're doing for the arena. Uh, you can't just build some uh, cookie cutter facility. So you have to come up with something dynamic and something that's gonna draw attention and is gonna uh, be worthy of this market. And I don't know if this is aimed as saying that's not possible here, or this won't happen here, or he's setting the bar, but he's obviously spelling out that this is not going to be easy. Once you do that, you then have to pay for it. Which is another thing that's going to be difficult that he's calling attention to here. Uh, and that's the biggest challenge. So um, is there a market for a 30, is there a market for a baseball stadium? I, I would hope so. I would hope that the work has been done to study the market. And again, with the projections of sellouts in a 33,000-seat stadium that still needs like 29000 per game for 30 years to pay off Clark County bonds, like he's maybe even questioning some of the projections. Um, I think it's a little more challenging. The economics of baseball are very different than the other three sports. Another thing that's been said a lot here on this channel, he'll mention how many fans, how many tickets you need to sell, Two point. Four million a season in baseball. Um, the regional sports television comes into play here. This is not a huge market for that. That's also been questioned. Uh, Las Vegas would by far be Major League Baseball's smallest market. And the way baseball operates with its media rights deals, it's not national packages like football. It's regional packages. Uh, and you're going to have to sell two and a half million tickets. That's, that's not easy. So um, the question is, is, what do they do in the other 270 dates? Yeah. That's also been questioned, right? 
And, and certainly if you're opening up a venue, you're not doing it just for baseball. You'd like to recoup some money in other events and other opportunities. And what are the other events that can, can play baseball stadiums? It's not, baseball stadiums are not a great concert venue. Something that I've not really brought up here on this channel, but it's also a good point. You know, you talk about, well, they'll bring in this act and that act, but... They're just not set up geometrically um, for, for great concert venues. You'll have some, but you're not going to have what you see at, at arenas, and you're not going to see what, uh, what you have at Allegiant. So what other events can you put there? Oh, that's not my job. I, uh, as my rabbi told me to say, I wish them well. <laughs> Again, I, I just feel like all the questions that were brought up there by, by Mark Bidane, now this is what he does. He's in the business of pro sports and maneuvers like this and now part of the Oak Hill group that's, that's going to build an NBA caliber arena and really try and lure in the NBA to Las Vegas. I'm just saying for him to reference everything that me, sports broadcaster, has been asking questions about in the last six months, um, it, it's just weird to, to feel on, on such a similar page of, of, of wonder here and how exactly is this going to work out. Obviously, though, I, th I think you can see he said things there, but he said even more with, wish his, them. with his body language. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> I wish them well. Nick, Nicky, uh, Major League Baseball plays pretty much during... Mark's answer. <laughs> Nikki Fargus! She just said Mark's answer. She's like, no comment. What he said was good enough for me. Hang on, let's go back to that. As my rabbi told me to say, I wish them well. <laughs> I wish them well. Nick, Nicky, uh, Major League Baseball plays pretty much during... Mark's answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about it. Howard's like, can I still ask? You'll be uh, competing with a baseball team in a, in a market with a fan base, you know, that you know, only have so many dollars. Are, is that any concern, I mean, you know, with, with baseball coming, if it comes here with... And that is a fair question, right? Like the WNBA season, summertime, baseball, summertime, they're what, they'd be a block or two away from each other? Usually baseball, because you'll be right up at the same dates a lot of times. Well, I, I like the growth of our game. Yeah. Um, I, you know, when I got here a few years ago, um, it, obviously we had the COVID situation, but to see our attendance and to see the community get behind these women has been um, pretty phenomenal. Um, when you're able to sell out uh, a 10,000 uh, seat arena um, throughout playoffs and then during the regular season. We did get an opportunity to play over at T-Mobile, our final regular season game, and we had over 17,000 people there. Wow. So you can see this community just really rallying around these women. Our sport is totally different. Um, I think we play the game in its purest form. I understand everybody loves people dunking the basketball, and we do have some people that can do that. <laughs> But the game is, is, is played the way it's supposed to be played. And I think our fans see it and believe it. And the atmosphere that we've created is very affordable for this, um, this community. Uh, Mark Davis' vision to reprice um, um, and do a repricing structure. And by the way, if you're not up to speed on that, Mark Davis, owner of the Raiders, is also owner of the Aces. He took over that team. Were they... San Antonio, I think. Then they were Salt Lake City. He brought them to Las Vegas. So Mark Davis, dual owner in this market. Where there's a $10 ticket, there's no bad seat in Michelob Boach Arena. No. There's, there really isn't. And I think that says a lot about our commitment to this community as well. Um, so again, Mark's answer, if that answers <laughs> the question. She, she's basically said, I'm going to steer some things in the directions I want to go, but I endorse everything that Mark Bedane just said. So... Yeah, and again, I, if you watch this whole discussion, you'll see that they're jovial back and forth, and they're talking about what each franchise does for each other, and kind of trying to steer clear of the A's thing. Derek, I want to ask you in a, in a different manner. You played with established NHL teams like the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Calgary Flames, and then you played with an expansion team. There was talk with Major League Baseball wants to expand, and there's been argument. Well, maybe Vegas should wait for an expansion team. You know. By the way, this is a, a very relevant question by Howard, like longtime Las Vegan, to ask to another longtime Las Vegas resident, Derek England, uh, because this is a, a real debate down there right now. Do you prefer to get something that already exists, or would you rather do what the Golden Knights did and start from scratch? They know the reason that the Golden Knights are largely successful is because they are a true Las Vegas product. They are 
truly Vegas born like their slogan. Would Major League Baseball give up a you know potential two billion dollar expansion fee to you know to, you know for the A's? As a player, as a now as a you know front office person with the, with the um, with the with the uh, Knights, what's more? What seems better is it is, have, have an established team come in, or you know building something from the ground up, an expansion franchise like you guys did. I'm interested in the answer. I think at the end of the day, you got to put a product out there that's going to yeah. sell. Um, you know, the first year, you know, you guys have sold because you're a winning team. So are the Knights. That first year, I had a ton of people I knew bought tickets. We're offing them, offing them. Now, you don't want to give them away. You want to go to the games, and you're not having 60% of Steeler fans at the game because you have a winning product. You want to go support that winning product. I mean, I totally agree. Let's let's go over two things here. The first impression, you never get to make it twice. That's obvious. And like, that's a challenge for the A's now. If they're really going to do this by 2028, they need to get really good in 25, 6, and 7 in wherever they're playing and spending a ton of money. They can't walk in in 2028 and be like, here we are, and we're not ready for primetime yet. Uh, and the other part about it is, I mean, it literally is the A's formula that they are expecting 30% of tourists to attend their baseball games. And this is what Derek England is saying, that maybe that's how it started with the Golden Knights, but they quickly wanted that to go away. They wanted to create a home ice advantage. And their owner, Bill Foley, has even said over time that there is a system that they have that they will not sell groups of tickets, like full rows of tickets, to visiting team fans. So the point he's making here twofold, but yeah, largely that over time, you don't want it to be like a Raiders situation and a takeover by every other team's fans. And I think that's going to be the number one thing. If you can put a winning product out there, you're going to get more of your local fans out there than, than, than the traveling fans uh, coming into town. All right, there you go. Uh, quick and, and you know uh, precise that answer. But I, I just thought that was interesting, especially Mark Bedane. He clearly has the most to say about this. He's got the most experience, but... Um, it was just interesting that that nobody really wanted to roll out the red carpet, the 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 welcome mat. Nobody seemed really connected to that. And and maybe it's because it's not a done deal, or maybe there are some feelings and things we don't know about. Um, certainly, the Raiders and A's continued rift, apparently, uh, from Mark Bedane's perspective, still in existence. So, just wanted you to see that. I thought it was pertinent to the conversation and what's happening right now with the ace. You made it here to the end of the video. You know I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so I can definitely see you back here next time. <laughs>